I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim HaMashiach, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Rahakdash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, HaMashiach, Yahushai being the name of the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, the Lord and Savior of the children of Israel, which are being called today so-called Black Hispanics and Native Americans. But according to biblical prophecy, they truly indeed are the Hebrews' lights of the Bible. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, GMS, and salutations to the whole full like brethren out there pushing a the word in sincerity and in truth, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. And of course, to those men, I would like to say shalom, while Barak and my thumb. Peace and blessings upon you and the Holy Spirit, the Rechakadash. And I just wanted to continue going into the Ark and the Covenant, man. Because last week I did a, a lesson how Yahweh Shai is the Ark of the Covenant, all right? And this is what I want to continue. I want to continue on going into how everything that was inside the Ark of the Covenant resembles Yahweh Shai. I had did a lesson a couple months back how Yahweh Shai is, uh, was the manna that fell down from heaven, all right? I never did a lesson about how uh, Yahweh Shai, you know, he, he's the walking law. But if brothers don't know, Yahweh Shai was the walking law when he came in the flesh roughly about 2,000 years ago. And what I want to go into today is how Yahweh Shai uh, spiritually is Aaron's rod, which budded, all right? Because these are all the things that was inside the Ark and the Covenant. You had the manna, which fell down from heaven, Aaron's rod, which budded, and the Ten Commandments, all right? And everything that was inside the Ark and the Covenant resembled Yahweh Shai. All right, so I want to start off with the book of Exodus chapter 25 verse 17 and it says and thou shalt have a mercy seat of pure gold two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof and this is going into the dimensions of the ark and the covenant all right verse 18 and it says and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold beaten walk thou shalt make them it says what work shalt thou make them I'm read that again, Shalak here. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work, thou shalt make them. And the two ends of the mercy seat, and the cherubims represents angels, right? Verse 19. And make one cherubim on one end, and the other cherubim on the other end. Even the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. So you have one angel on one end, the other angel on the other and they were facing each other. All right. And it says, And the cherubim shall stretch forth the wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark. And the mercy seat represented the, uh, the lid of the ark of the covenant. All right. Which is said that. Uh, the, the spirit, the 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 yeah, the spirit of the Most High, the presence of the Most High dwelt in in that in that in that location of the Ark of the Covenant. It was known as the Mercy Seat, and that's where judgment was laid out, whether you receive punishment or whether you receive mercy, right? And it says, verse twenty one, and thou shalt put the Mercy Seat above the uh, upon the Ark, and thou shalt put the Mercy Seat above upon the Ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And that testimony was the Ten Commandments, right? Now, if you didn't watch the previous lesson, I had went into how Yahweh Shai was the Ark of the Covenant. Because when he was when he when he died and he was put into the sepulchre, uh, the sepulchre, the angels, two angels grabbed his body and they grabbed they grabbed his body in like manner how the Ark of the Covenant was uh was built, all right? And it mentions it in John chapter 20, verse 11. And it says, And Mary stood without the sepulcher, weeping, because Yahweh Shah died, right? And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and see if two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at, his, at the feet. So you have one angel at the head of Yahweh Shah and, and the other at his feet. Just how the Ark of the Covenant was made. And it says where the body of Yahweh Shai had lain. Okay. So Yahweh Shai is the Ark of the Covenant. Now, in Hebrews 9, it tells you all the things that was placed in the Ark. All right. Hebrews 9 and 4. And it says, which had the golden censer. 
It said, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid with gold. It says, wherein was the golden pot that had manna. Okay. So it was manna in the Ark of the Covenant. And Aaron's rod that budded. Right. And the tables of the covenant. And, o and over it, the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot speak particularly. Okay. So these are all the things that were inside the Ark of the Covenant. And what I want to go into is Aaron's rod and what that symbolizes and how does it correlate with Yahweh Shai. Okay. So I think a good place to start is uh, the book of Numbers 17 because it tells you the uh, the story behind Aaron's rod that budded. All right. And I'm going to read the whole chapter. It's only 13 verses. And I'm, I'm going to read it quickly. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers, and over of their princes according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. So each, tri each tribe of Israel, which were twelve, had a rod. All right? And it says, And write thou every man's name upon his rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's rod upon the and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony, while I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I who I shall choose shall blossom. So the most high was going to choose a tribe which was going to be part of his priesthood. OK. And in order for this to happen, each each tribe had got a rod and whatever a rod blossom, that was going to be the Lord's priesthood. OK. And it says, and it shall come to pass that the man's rod who I shall choose shall blossom and I will make to cease from him, from me, the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby ye murmur against you. Whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel and every one of the princes gave him a rod apiece for each for each prince one according to their father's houses even 12 rods and the rod of Aaron was among their rods and Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of the tabernacle of a witness and it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness and behold the rod of Aaron for the for the house of Levi was budded. OK, so Aaron's rod budded and it was a sign that this was going to be the Lord's priesthood. OK, and it says in the in the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloom blossoms and yielded almonds. OK, because Moses, uh, not Moses, Shalaki, uh, Aaron's staff, his, his rod was out of a, a almond tree. OK, and it blossomed and it yielded forth almonds. Mind you that this staff is a is is dead. OK, it's not part. It's not it's not part of uh, a tree. It, it's not part of the roots no more. It's just a staff. It's, it's a dead. It was a dead rod, a dead stick, and it yielded blossoms. So that was a miracle done. OK, it was a sign. It was it, it was a it was a divine sign from the heavenly father, Yahweh. And Moses brought all the rods before the Lord and to the children of Israel. And they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt quiet them and thou shalt quiet. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings for me that they die not. And Moses did so as the Lord commanded him. So did he. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Whoso, whosoever cometh anything near the tabernacle of the lord shall die shall we be consumed with dying okay so that's the story behind aaron's rod that buddeth now all these things were spiritual the rod yielding forth fruit that the tribe of levi gained authority over the priesthood because the rod budded all these things were spiritual and it represented yahweh shai okay now is yahweh shai likened unto a rod the answer is yes, and the book of Isaiah 11 proves it. This is Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Uh -huh. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. OK, and that and that rod that stand out of Jesse. OK, because a rod is a stick. OK, it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty much a dead stick. And that rod that came out of Jesse was Yahweh And even though the rod died, he came back to life. He came back to life. Now, I'm, I'm going to go into it further, but the proof that Yahweh Shai was the rod, right? And just how Aaron's rod yielded for fruit. We, we, in Yahweh Shai, okay, yields for fruit, man. All right? The book of John 15 tells you it. Just how it's Aaron's rod budded. We bud and we bud and yield for fruit in Yahweh Shai. This is the book of uh, John chapter 15, verse 1. And I'm going to read all the way down to verse 8. And this is Yahweh Shah speaking. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. All right. The vine represents what? The root. Okay. It says every branch is, is me. Oshalaki. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth that it, that it may bring more, uh, forth more fruit. All right. That word purges means to cleanse. All right. So when we come in the name of Yahweh Shai, when we truly believe in him, we're purged of our old man. We're purged of our dead works. All right. And we become a new creature in Yahweh Shai. Therefore, we bring forth more fruits. We bring forth, we bring forth more believers. Just as Aaron's rod budded, we bring forth fruit in Yahweh Shai. It budded and yield forth almonds, man. It's all spiritual. Verse three. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And that's how we're uh that's how we purged by the word. Verse 4. It says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit. Listen to this. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear forth fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me, okay? So we can't bring forth fruit if we're not in Yahusha, okay? Because Yahusha is that rod, all right? We need Yahusha to bring forth fruit, man, all right? Verse 6, uh, I skipped it, verse, verse 5. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches, and he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye cannot, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he cast forth as a branch and is withered. And a man, and a man gathereth them and cast them into fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me, I'm going to read verse six again. I think I read it wrong. It says, if, if, a, man, if a man abide not in me, He's cast forth as a branch and is withered. And a man gathereth them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So, so shall ye be my disciples. Okay. And that's what Aaron's rod represented spiritually, man. It represented bringing much fruit in if we abide in Yahweh Shai. Now, I want to go back to the story of Numbers because, um, let me read it. I want to go back to the uh, the book of Numbers 17 and 8 because it mentioned how uh, Aaron's rabbi to try to leave our buddy. And through this, the murmurings of Israel was quiet. Because they knew that the authority, they knew that the priesthood of the Lord was dealing with the tribe, uh, with the tribe of Levi, because Aaron rod that budded, and that represented authority. Okay, I'm gonna read it again. Uh, Numbers seventeen and eight, and it came to pass that on the morrow Mo Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and and bloom blossoms and yieldeth almonds all right and this was a token that the lord was dealing with this tribe now the same thing happened with yahweh shah man yahweh shah was the was declared all authority all power 
from the heavenly father Yahweh, because just how the stick, just how Aaron's rod was a dead stick, and and it came to life, it yielded forth, uh, it budded, it blossomed, and it yielded forth fruit. The same thing with Yahweh Shah when he died and was rose again on the third day. Okay, he was declared all authority, man. So the rod represents authority, and Yahweh Shah has that because he obeyed unto death and he rose again from the dead, man. Through the power of the heavenly Father Yahweh. All right, this is the book of num. Uh, this is the book of Romans, chapter fourteen, verse nine. For to this end, Yahweh Shai both died and rose. This how was the stick. The rod was a dead stick, and came back to life through the power of the heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai died and rose again, came back to life through the power of the heavenly Father. It says, "For this end, Yahweh Shai both died and rose and revived." That he might be Lord both of the dead and the living, man. Yahweh Shai has, has power over the dead and the living. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna keep reading. It says, Why doest thou judge thy brother? And why doest thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai has that power uh, to, to judge now, man, because he both died and he lived. He came back to life. Okay? Yahweh Shai has that authority now. All right. And I'm going to close out with the book of Ephesians 1 and 20. And it says, I'm going to read all the way to the end. It says, which he wrought in Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And Yahweh Shai sits now on the right hand side of the heavenly father. All right. Yahweh Shai is second in command in the universe, man. That's how much power Yahweh Shai has, man. The people fail to realize how much power he has, man. He's the son of the Heavenly Father. All right? That's his inheritance to rule over everything. All right? Because Yahweh Shai was, was that rod which came back to life. Verse 21. For above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is that every name that is named, not only in this world, but also and also in that which is to come and have put all things under his feet. Whose feet? Yahweh Shah's and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body and fullness of him that filleth all in all, man. And that represents power, man. So that's what the staff, that's what the staff of Moses represented, man. I mean, the staff of Aaron represented Shalakia. It represented, it represented life. It represented bringing in fruit, man. It represented bringing in, and, and, and brothers, uh, uh, believers, okay. Men, women, and children back to the faith, man, that we all shall live, man. All right. And it represented Authority and power that Yahweh Shah has. Okay. And it was all spiritual, man. So everything that's inside of the Ark of the Covenant represents Yahweh Shah. So with that, I hope you brothers out there was edified. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai, Ba Shem, Rahakadash, Yahweh being the Heavenly Father. Of course, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai being the Son, the only begotten Son, man, of the Heavenly Father. I like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, GMS, and uh, Shalom to the elect, man. Until the next time, I say Shalom.